What's up guys, this is Mandan Sokbakji. Today's video is a guide for Cuckoo Satan K3. We summarize main patterns, encounter able patterns, and basic patterns. Important patterns and extra skill timing will be introduced during the main pattern, so hold on. Before going in, there are three basic information you must know. First, battle items. These are ones you need. There are plenty of CC, so don't forget to take Sacred Charm for other party members. Second, deciding numbers for Super Mario pattern. Players must decide number 1 to 4 for the main mechanic. Let me quickly introduce what Super Mario pattern is. During Gate 3, the boss draws star-shaped magic circle and the pattern starts. At first try, number 1 Mario player must fill the meter by 100% and turn into a clown. After 15 seconds later, Fire Pillar appears at center. Then number 1 Mario who turned into a clown must head to the Fire Pillar to enter the minigame. Inside the minigame, you can move around with direction key, also Q is hammer attack and W is jump. Your goal inside the minigame is to destroy 3 same balls with a given color. If one player went in, color mark is given between 3 members outside the game. And they must write a chat whether it's red, blue or yellow. Back to minigame, you saw the chat. Quickly destroy all 3 of them and head to the portal that's at the end. Press G to get out and you successfully clear the first Super Mario pattern. Throughout the pattern, there are 3 notices you should be aware of. Don't get near Fire Pillar unless you turn into a clown. Fire Pillar deletes player's HP if they are not a clown. Each player can enter the minigame only once and game's over if no one goes in. So everyone should survive until the 4th Super Mario pattern. Player with color mark gets killed if the Mario player don't destroy all 3 balls, so don't forget to destroy them all. Third basic information is ways to fill your bar. How should we fill our bars to turn into a clown? 3 ways are mainly used. Using balls. Kaku Satan normally summons 2 balls with large fields. Repeatedly, color of fields changes from white to red. Standing on the red field, your meter actively increases. If you're a number 1 or number 2 Mario, Fill your bar around 50% to 70% with these balls and destroy them real quick. Second way is to use Madness Field. When you get hit by a cross laser beam or Kaku Satan's vomit, you can see a Madness Field around you. If other players get near the Madness Field, their bar increases. Last method is to use a doll. As Super Mario Pattern starts, a doll is summoned anywhere in the map. If a player gets near the doll, it jumps once and begins to breathe fire. Getting hit by flame, the bar quickly increases. Normally people fill up 50% to 70% using balls and then turn into a clown using the doll. One thing everyone should watch out is that they can kill the doll as it can jump toward the boss. So watch out where the doll jumps and then continue fighting the boss. And that was long explanation about basic terms. Now let's move on to main patterns. When you enter the boss and quickly lowers the HP, Cocoon Staven summons two balls that can help you fill the madness meter. Number 1 should fill 70%, number 2 should fill 50% as possible, and you raise the balls. At 152, first Mario pattern begins. The boss draws magic circle and the doll appears. Number 1 should use the doll to turn into a clown and go to the center. If you're a first Mario and you have some time left, Throw a bomb on the doll by pressing Q. The bomb lowers the armor buff that doll has which literally makes other players easily kill the doll. You got in? Now the minigame starts. Please follow the link below if you want to know how to easily clear all 4 minigames. 3 members outside the game must tell which color the Mario should destroy. While the Mario player is doing his or her job, one player gets imprisoned and the curtain falls. 2 players who didn't get imprisoned should dodge objects and cross the road to stagger the boss. You'll get one shot if you get hit by those sharp wheels. Plus, if you fail to stagger the boss, the imprisoned player gets killed, so do everything you can to stagger. If you did, then your party can move on. After staggering the boss, party members should quickly lower the boss HP to reach 125 because second Mario pattern comes out at 125. Before the second Mario pattern, there is one important mechanic you must know. It's HP Reverse. If your party isn't strong enough to lower the HP under 125 right away, Kaku Satan uses HP Reverse. The boss lifts his cane 
a red aura instantly shows. The magic circles appear underneath some players. Players with an HP reverse debuff should lower their HP around 30,000 by walking around flames at the edge. It's reasonable to make your HP around 30,000 due to burn damage. As time reaches zero, those players HP get reversed. If HP reverse is done twice, the boss moves to the center for a big damage. Ground turns to a giant clown face and everyone gets silenced. Soon the boss gives damage to all players for a number of times they turn into a clown. Game's over when the clown stack reaches 5 and this is why people instead of Mario players should not turn into a clown. This stack can be erased by using Aster Inanna but I'll explain later. At 125, second Mario pattern comes out. Same with before, number 2 Mario should turn into a clown using doll and head to the center. If the second Mario got in, write down the color. Soon, curtain falls and one player gets imprisoned. And this time, there are no sharp wheels, but lots of hooks come from left and right. Dodge those hooks and quickly stagger the boss. To give you a small tip, hooks come out slowly, so use utility skill as soon as the curtain rises. After the stagger, party members should lower the HP up to 90. At this moment, Esther's skill is fully charged, and party leader has three ways to choose. If party members are strong enough and haven't seen the HP reverse yet, use Ninave for a quick 90. Benefit of using Ninave is that you can reach 90 in no time. However, it will be dangerous during the showtime pattern that comes out at 90. Not easily seen in trial parties, but if you want to practice showtime pattern, I say it's totally fine. If party members are not strong and already have seen the HP reverse, use Inanna to delete clown stacks. Benefit of using Inanna right after the stagger is that you can delete clown stacks. However, it will be dangerous during the showtime pattern too. Last choice you have is using Inanna during the showtime pattern. Benefit of this method is that you can safely clear the pattern that comes out in 90. But party members must withstand until 90. Also, number 3 Mario has to refill the bar before the third Mario pattern. This way is more efficient if party members are strong, but it is safer a solution for those who can't get more than 90. This is commonly used in Korean server 2. In 90, it's showtime. The boss moves to the center and everyone should gather at 12 o'clock. After the cutscene, the boss attacks clockwise or counterclockwise, so follow the direction and dodge the attack. While running in one direction, blue target mark is given to two players. Lava field is created twice right below those players, so they must leave the field away from the middle and then come back in. Next, everyone should get near the boss as outside explodes. Use Inanna as you get in if you are going to. Until outside explodes 4 times, players must run in clockwise or counterclockwise, and then run counterclockwise or clockwise to dodge all attacks. Suddenly, a bomb appears in random direction and a yellow pizza follows the aggro player. Aggro player must aim the bomb with yellow pizza to destroy the bomb. After the first bomb, second bomb comes out at opposite side. Same as first one, aim it and get out of the yellow zone. While heading toward the second bomb, watch out for target marks. Also, it's better all four members just aim bombs together in order not to make a mistake. If you fail to aim it properly, the bomb explodes and everyone dies. After aiming bombs, dodge yellow zones and go to your party number time 3. By the way, if you're number 3 Mario and hasn't filled the bar yet, get hit by the yellow zone once. Standing in your position, 4 target marks spawn in the middle and follow one player each after a few seconds. Players must run clockwise to get rid of the target mark. If you get caught up, you get killed, so run away as fast as possible. If you're a slow character, use Swiftness Robe, plus run clockwise even though yellow zones block your way. Use Space Bar or other utility skills to dodge them. Never run backwards. When all four members survive from the pattern, you successfully clear the showtime. At 79, third Mario pattern begins. Same as before, number 3 Mario player should turn to a clown and get to the center. As number 3 got in, write down the color and carton will fall. This time, both sharp wheels and hooks come out. It's more difficult than before, but two players who did not get imprisoned have to dodge them and stagger the boss. If you did, 
Let's go straight to 4th Mario. At 52, 4th Mario pattern starts. Number 4 Mario player get in after turning into a clown. Write down the color and curtain falls. Suddenly, hooks come out from left and there are two levers next to the boss. When you get close to the lever, you get stunned and simple keyboard mechanic comes out. Quickly, solve the mechanic and pull the lever pressing G. If both levers are pulled, now you can stagger the boss. You can never stagger the boss before you pull both levers. So don't forget to press G after the keyboard mechanic. And this is all about main patterns. Thank you for watching the video, and we'll be back with Kaku Sand in minigame. Thank you. You thought that was end of main pattern. Welcome to the hidden stage. Once you kill the boss, survive players move on to the hidden stage. The concept of the hidden stage is bingo. When you first enter the stage, two zones are white. White zones increase your meter, so you shouldn't stand on it. And during the fight, time bomb is given above one random player. When the time is over, bomb appears at that position and explodes in cross shape. As the bomb explodes, normal zones turn into white zones, and white zones turn into normal zones. If one row is all white, zones change into red zones, and it's a bingo. When you make bingo, party members become invincibility, and this is a clue for the bingo pattern. After the third time bomb, the Ku Satan moves to 12 clock and prepares a big damage. To survive, players must make a bingo with three bombs. If they did, Player survive with invincibility and earns more time for free DPS. Also, boss 14 HP gets deleted. If they fail to make a bingo, party leader must use Esther Inanna to safely skip the turn. So party leader should save the Esther skill for a plan B. Fighting the boss, there are three things you need to watch out. Flying hammers. After the time bomb is given, endangered hammers attack from random direction. You get killed when you get hit by that hammer, so watch out. Fear. The boss teleports and triggers fear on those who are looking at the boss. Safe at backside. Stun. When you step on white or red zone with time bomb above your head, you get stunned and you must enthusiastically smash spacebar to get out of it. Don't step on dangerous fields and use spacebar if you have to cross a color zone. At hidden stage, it's better to make a bingo with gamer sense but I brought a solution for those who have no idea what to do. And that was a long way explaining main patterns. These are counterable patterns. Rush. The Ku Satan rushes forward and attacks backwards. Rolling ball. Same with gate 1, the boss rides a ball and follows a player. Now let's look at basic patterns. Basic patterns are mostly enhanced version of gate 1. Dance. The boss dances with claps. Sharp wheels or hooks come out in a random direction, so watch out. Electric shock. The boss steps back and shoots the shock wave. Shock can be purified. Vomit. The boss spits something out. Madness field is created around you if you get hit. This pattern can come out after splitting up to 4 clones. Thunder. The boss attacks in cross shape and disappears. Then thunder randomly spawns and the boss appears 3 times attacking the aggro player. Watch out the yellow zone that comes out at third attack. Aggro field. Stand still and dodge the field when it's fixed. Fart. The boss farts to attack players nearby. Catching a mole. The boss disappears and quickly comes out attacking yellow zones twice. Cross explosion and teleport. The boss attacks in cross shape and teleports then lands on a certain player and outside explodes twice. First yellow zone can be a fake, so watch out. Fear laser. The boss shoots laser in clockwise or counterclockwise. Fear can be purified. Spotlight. The boss moves to the center and dances. Bacons appear and it can happen maximum 4 times. Your meter increases a lot when you get hit by these bacons. The rest of them are the same with gate 1. And this is all about gate 3. Thank you for watching the video, and we'll be back with Kaku Sating minigame video.
Thank you.